We have a small lip forming in the back side, on the front side or the leading edge of the tire. This is a good indicator that rebound adjustment is completely wrong and out. This wear pattern difference here is due to throttle application. Goes through the corner, lets the bike go through the corner and then hits the gas hard, really hard here, and then feathers the gas out. Are you trail braking into the corner? A little bit, yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Well, that's what the problem is. You brake in and then going as you get the bike stood up post apex. You're picking the bike up and then rolling it on. So what it helped help you technique wise from looking at the tire is go into the corner, trail it, let go of it. Before you get to the apex, roll the gas on. And then this wear pattern here will come down. Okay. And you'll, this, you can already feel the ledge in this where yeah. it's out around, yeah. just from getting on the throttle hard. So if we push on this and watch the back of the bike, you'll see it rise really slow. And that means there's just not enough um, ability for the shock to come up right away. So we have too much rebound dampening in this. So we'll make a big adjustment, take six or seven clicks out of it. And let's see what changes in the rising rate of the bike now. And that's a noticeable visual difference. So now we've got a good rising rate there now. Let's leave it. What should happen to this component of wear is that it actually starts to flatten out the next session out. So by the end of the next session, we'll see a big visual difference in this particular marking. And we'll also see some difference here because as the day warms up and the track warms up, this wear characteristic will go away because the tire will get hot enough to work. So this morning when we pushed on this one, it, was, it went down and it stopped completely. It wouldn't even return because it was so cold. So it was at two clicks out and I changed it to five. So now the bike's got some heat in it. Let's see how many bounces we get out of the front. So you could see from this morning, Dana, when we adjusted it, it yeah. went down and it stopped. Didn't come back up. It even. would not come back now up at all. Bounced. Now, now it's, it's all bounced. over the place. And that was two clicks out and you went to six clicks out. Yes. So I'm going to put it back to two clicks out and we'll evaluate it there. Because we've got heat in the, we got heat in it. That was your point? Yeah. The point is, obviously overnight, the cold got to the oil, the oil turns to molasses. And this is one of the reasons why I want the bikes hot because how they are on the track, the hotter I can have it, the better it gets tuned. So now we'll put it back to where it was when it came to me this morning. It will go down and literally stop, would not return at all. It's too slow and it's hesitating. So we'll go to three. And what we're trying to do is to get it to come back up and go over the top into a second bounce. There. Just right. Now you didn't want that on that Augusta. And I don't want it now. The problem is that the bike has cooled off a lot. We know at two out, it looks too slow, but probably on the track, it's gonna work pretty good. So now again, with this one, as we have with the MV, the overall balance of the chassis is now restored. So Dana's gonna have a bike that feels a lot more planted and will actually work front and back perfectly synchronized. Much better. It, exactly it would fall in, and then come back. Yeah. So what you feel is like a figure of eight exactly. doing this. It's like, what's going on? So you can't relax. Was that because of the pogo? Yeah, because there was not enough rebound damping in the front. So, and it very accurately pointed out by the rider going into the corner, like we talked about last night, all the weight transfers to the front because you're decelerating and braking. So if that's wrong, it will immediately pogo. And because you're at lean, it won't do this, it'll do that. You'll get a figure of eight motion. So very well figured out. Good on your part to actually see that. So now we'll send this one out, see what it does to the tire wear in the back, both on the corner throttle application issue, the tire pressure issue, and the rebound. So we've got three, three things we have to figure out with this on the back alone. So we'll see what happens next session. To finish up this bike, we had gone through the rear wheel, changed the pattern on the shock of wear and tire wear, 
and ultimately finished up in the front. Daniel was complaining that the bike was not steering the way he wanted it to. Travel indications showed the front end was too stiff. We had to play with a combination of click and preload to get the rebound correct. So rather than change those settings that we know worked, what I did was take two clicks of compression out off the bottom of the fork to make it a little supple, but also allow the front end to sit lower generally as the bike is being ridden. So we know the rear tire cleaned up perfect. The front tire is wearing absolutely perfectly and on the wear indicator, we're right at three quarters in terms of travel. So as far as the chassis setup is concerned at this point, we're done until Dana drops three seconds and something else changes and then we address that problem. So it's either gonna run wide on the gas or it's gonna be unstable on the brakes and that's all. So as he drops time, those are the only two adjustments he's gonna to make to keep the chassis balanced. So on to the rider. Oh yeah, huge, huge difference. Um, it's a lot more stable in a corner. It sets in a little bit better. And I think my corner speed's a lot higher today just because it's more comfortable. The entry, the going into the corner, the bike settles down a lot better and, and uh, I don't feel like I'm upsetting it. And uh, it's been fantastic, worth every penny. I bet, uh, <laughs> I bet my reduced tire wear today is paid for the suspension tuning, seriously. <laughs> so. Uh, the coolest thing is um, having him set it up and then me go out and ride and um, seeing what he's actually done and then feel it and come back in and describe to him what it's doing now and uh, see what he does to adjust it and going back and forth. You just, I mean, you got an expert there showing you what to do instead of me just ballparking it and tweaking with things and having no idea. Um, I've read tons about suspension setup, but I never quite got it until I saw him doing it. So, good video.